Okay. And uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to write a lot of these ideas down. Um, if you're okay with it, I'd love to get started right away. Like we said, um, this is this is something that it's uh, almost like a dream opportunity for me because I get to be creative and have fun um, and also help you. We all help each other. Hey everyone, George Edmondson. I've gotten a couple questions online about how I create the high quality Instagram videos. And so what I wanted to do was a quick tutorial on how I do this using Final Cut Pro. I've never done a tutorial before, so if you don't mind, tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like so that I can improve. If I ever do any more tutorial videos, I'll be able to help anyone that I can. Um, I'm usually the one watching the tutorial videos, so it's pretty new to me. Working with MotionVFX.com has been an absolute dream over the past several years. Since starting my company in 2014, I got into making tutorial videos and I quickly realized that I believe I was born to be a teacher as much as I was born to be a video maker. So naturally, um, working with MotionVFX.com and making these tutorials uh, was just a perfect fit. So a lot of people have wondered what the process looks like when I communicate with Motion VFX. So uh, we have Slack channels. They uh, give me the plugin that's gonna be releasing soon. And basically they just tell me to have fun. They really give us a lot of freedom and we have uh, flexibility and we get to just go take the plugin as video creators, have fun with it. And then we get to turn around and use that to teach people uh, like some of you that might be viewing this on, on how to use the plugin. I am also really passionate about documentary filmmaking. We are an Emmy award winning documentary film company and we used a lot of Motion VFX products in that documentary as well. Now this is before I was working directly with Motion VFX. Now some of these Motion VFX tutorials get pretty in depth. We really try to treat these with the care that we would give any of our other video projects. I can't do that alone. Even though I'm on camera, there is a team of people behind the camera, behind the editing, and we're all working collaboratively to make these videos a reality for the MotionVFX.com audience. And I think that it'd be really cool if you heard from them as well. What's up, I'm Nick. I'm one of the people that help make all of these tutorial videos. I'm usually behind the camera. I love Motion VFX. I love making these videos. All of us come in, we look at the plugin, we come up with an idea and we film crazy stuff with it. And it's just an amazing opportunity. Well, I mean, from an explosion in a coal mine to filming with a DeLorean, to shooting a crazy paintball scene. I mean, there's all types of stuff and all of it is made possible from Motion VFX and their plugins. Hey, I'm Gavin. I'm one of the members that also works at Seed Creative on some of the Motion VFX projects. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. My passion is visual effects, which ties into Motion VFX really well. But what I really love about Motion VFX is how simple and intuitive they've made it. So my favorite plugin that they've made is M-Tracker 3D because it's literally just a one-click track. Whenever I do those in Blender, it's always so finicky. But with Motion VFX, it's so easy. I've been a user of MotionVFX.com since I started my company, and I'm proud to say I'm still a user of MotionVFX.com. Regardless of the fact that we work with them, yes, we literally use MotionVFX.com plugins on every video that we deliver to our other clients. And so hopefully um, it's obvious at this point that when we're making these tutorials, it's real. We believe in what they're doing. They're creating tools that help you make better videos for your clients. They're saving you time. They're increasing the value that you're giving to your clients. And we're proud that we can play the small role in educating you just a little bit on their plugins so that you can go out and make a difference for yourself and make a difference for your clients. Thank you, Motion VFX. Y'all are awesome. Now, M Documentary is uh, is available now. We used it to make this video, and uh, on to the tutorial.
Once you've downloaded M Documentary via M Installer, it can be located in your titles as well as your transitions. M Documentary comes with six backgrounds, six freeze frames, nine movements, 23 overlay effects, five timelines, and 17 typography presets. Now we're going to go over a bit of each of these minus the freeze frames because those are a tutorial in and of themselves. If you want to use how to use these freeze frame effects, check out some of our other M freeze frame tutorials on this channel. So why don't we start really quickly by showing you the timeline of our little documentary that we just had. You can see that we used quite a bit going on. We had some backgrounds, some different titles, some different overlay effects. As you can see the light leaks here. And uh, one thing that I really love is our timeline there, which uh, we're gonna get into. We had different overlays, like I said, a vignette, um, titles, film overlays, backgrounds, freeze frames, all kinds of good stuff. So why don't we just check out this first bit here. So the first thing that I want to do is actually add a background so that we can do a title opener. Now, if you want to get a real-time preview, you can just come up and skim over each of these backgrounds or the different freeze frames, showing the custom movements, etc. I really like background number two, so I'm just gonna pick this up, drag it into the timeline. We will zoom in so you can see what's going on here. So you can see that we just have this background, some subtle movement there. On our canvas, we do have an on-screen control and that is just going to adjust that subtle flare there. Let me back up so you can see it. So you can see that we've got the flare here in the corner. Over on our inspector, we have animations in and out, and then we have movement speed. As you can see, there is a bit of movement going on. So you can adjust the movement speed. You can adjust the movement parameter, shadows and highlights. We have multiple textures here for our background. They're all very subtle. We have our background levels. So if you wanted to show a bit more of that, you can do so here with the slider, and then you can actually see a bit more what's going on with your different textures. Then we have diagram opacity. We can flip the diagram. We can flip it horizontally, vertically, or both. Then we've got our light opacity, additional light parameters, and vignette parameters here in the bottom. All right, so why don't we add a title? So we're going to come down here, and why don't we just scroll over some of these different titles here. That one's really cool, love it. So why don't we just pick this up, drag it in on top of our background. I'm going to let the background animate in a little bit first, and then we can see our title animate in. So we've got our background, then our title, and then we're gonna do something else there on the other side. As with most motion VFX titles, you have your on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Animations in and out with our speeds. We can make adjustments to our content's position and such here. We have content float. What this means is, as you can see, the title is just kind of moving as well with the background. So you can toggle that float on and off, or you have your float speed. So if you want it to move a bit quicker, you can do so here. Really cool. And then we have our title parameters beneath, so we can make changes here as well as make adjustments to font, size, etc. So as you can see, that's starting to look really cool. Boom. And then why don't we say that we want to show one of our timelines. I think that my favorite is going to be time jump, which is really neat, but there are multiple timelines that are adjustable here. If you want to have the ultimate customization, you also have this blank timeline as well as your text with your timeline pointer here. All right, so why don't we just grab time jump. We're gonna bring it in right behind our title. I'm going to adjust that. So we're gonna have our title come in and then we've got our timeline open up. 
adjust, and go back out. Once again, on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Animations in and out, and then our position, scale, rotation here in the inspector. Then we have our descriptions. We can toggle on and off. We can have our descriptions change, or we can have only our first description here. I like that they change, so let's just keep that. You can make changes to your descriptions here beneath in the text boxes. And then you get down to your timeline. You can toggle your timeline on and off. And then we can show the slide direction. So obviously this one is moving forward to 2020 from 1991. But if we wanted to have that moving backward, we just go here and toggle this to backward. And then we could change this to something like 1986. And then we can see we are just moving backwards in time. All right, why don't we continue down? So with a lot of documentaries, there are typically images that are used. There are a lot of different options for this. So we have our freeze frames. Now that can be used on photo or video. We have backgrounds that you could adjust and put beneath an image. And then we have our movements and our overlay effects. I'm gonna show you a couple different ones. So movements are really, really useful for, uh, for these images. So why don't we just grab one of them? We can do any of them. I think I'm just gonna do target zoom in. So we're just gonna drag this in. Now these are working as adjustment layers. So anything beneath that title is going to be affected. All right, so as you can see, we just have that movement, but check this out. We have these particles happening in 3D space. So it really looks like that image is now sort of in three dimensions and we're pushing past those particles. That is a really nice touch. We also have a sort of lens blur effect happening. We have an on-screen control here, so we can toggle where the push and the spotlight is going to happen. And you can see this is also adjusting and affecting where our particles are in three dimensional space. Over in our inspector, we have the zoom in scale amount. So if we wanted to scale that in even more, it's gonna be a more dramatic effect. We have our movement ease. So that is just going to adjust how softly that movement is going to be taking place. We have our defocus mode, so we can sharpen, we can blur. So what that means is it's going to start out in focus and then blur, or we can reverse that and it is going to start off blurred and then come into focus. You can adjust the strength, the horizontal and vertical blur. We can toggle our particles on and off. We can have the color mode of our particles be a sort of dark dust, or we can have them light. We can change the opacity of these particles. So you can see there, you can see them a lot better as it's out of focus there. We can adjust the spread of our particles. So if you want to push those in or out of three dimensional space, this is how you're doing that here. We can flip our particles if we'd like. And then we have the vignette and all of the things that are happening within that on-screen control that is adjusting our lighting. So this is a really cool way to just quickly enhance the look and feel of those images. All right, so now we have another image and we can do the same thing using our movements but there are some other options that we have as well. So why don't we look at some of our overlay effects? Now, again, you can just really quickly hover over these to see what kind of a look they're going to give you. In this instance, I'm going to just use the picture preset. Now, this can be used in two different ways. You can drag it in on top and then you see it's going to kind of flash out and we have a drop zone. So we can simply click our drop zone well, find the image that we want to fill and apply the clip. Easy enough. So that means that you could use this picture actually just directly in the timeline if you'd like. Or you can toggle this drop zone to background footage and then you can just simply use the background footage to enhance that image. Now this does work on video as well. 
And this is a great way to hold your video and your audio within this without having to be uh, dedicated to a drop zone. We have on-screen controls for position, and then we can adjust our mask, our rotation, our scale, etc. We can make our changes. Now, if we had a video and we wanted to freeze our footage on an image, this is how you select that here. So why don't we just actually pick this up and I can show you what it looks like on a video. So we're going to flash out and then boom, there's the image. And then we can adjust which frame we want that image to hold. So it's actually kind of cool. So boom, we adjust and then boom, there's the image. Pretty awesome. Then in our inspector, we continue down. We have our different animation parameters, our frame position. If you don't want to use the on-screen controls, background blur, prism adjustments. I mean, it goes on and on and on how much you have here. All right, why don't we show you another one? So this overlay effect photography is really cool and useful. So why don't we just drag it in on top? We're going to adjust the size there and let's show you what this does. So it looks like it has taken a photo and it works similarly to the way the picture preset works. So we have our animation in and out. We have our footage freeze and then we can make adjustments to the frame there to show which frame we want to freeze on. Boom, there it is. Oh, took a photo. It's doing some cool punching in and out. Really nice. And then you can make changes once again if you want to desaturate it or just let that be in color. We have our vignette blur going on in there and you can make adjustments to those parameters we have our frame opacity so if you don't like the uh photo look you can make changes there and then lastly we have our transitions and again you can just scroll over these with your cursor to get a real-time look at how these are going to look so if we wanted to just do maybe some sort of a time jump in between this image and this video, you do so here. And we just have some very simple parameters. We can move forward or backward in time. We have our slide range between none all the way to extreme. Adjustments to our blur strength and saturation, grain and more. And all of these are going to have different adjustable parameters. So as you can see here, we have all of these adjustable parameters as well. So you're not stuck with the presets. You can really fine tune these as you see fit. All right, and that is about it. Thank you so much for checking out M Documentary. It is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.